Well, hello and welcome to another Faith, Philosophy and Life with me, Mr. Shelton. I do hope you're doing well. I'm going to start with a really interesting one here. Um, what's happening in this picture? There you go. There's a bit of a clue at the top there. No, it's not Mr. Shelton's house at night. Why is it happening? Well, let me give you a clue. There you go. There's a bit more of a clue for you. What's happening there? Any ideas? Sure, some of you might have an idea. Let me reveal a bit more. Ah. Some people might have a clue now. Some of you still might not have any idea. There's a bit more. I'm sure you've got that right now. If you haven't, there's the final picture. So what's happening? Why is it happening? And what questions would you want to ask? Have a think about that while we've got our cheesy intro sequence. Okay, so we are looking at infant baptism today. Uh, that's what you can see there. And next lesson we'll be thinking about believers baptism. Last lesson we thought about sacraments. So you can see how this all fits together. So our title of the day is what happens in an infant baptism. Just ignore that date. That's just the date I recorded this lesson. Um, and so what happens in infant baptism? We're going to explain what happens during a baptism service and why these things occur. As always, do pause me as we go and please make sure that you send any of your work through to your teachers at the end of this session. It's going to be good if you can know what happens in baptism. It's going to be great if you can understand a reason why someone might choose to get baptised, evaluating these reasons, and even better if you could talk about the symbolism that takes place in the service. Um, so um, we're going to look at some key words, we're going to look at a ceremony, we're going to do some analysis, look at some questions, and then there's a wipeout activity as well. So how quickly can you unscramble these words? These are all words based on infant baptism, but they're obviously all anagrams. So pause me now while you do that. Come back to me when you're done. OK, so hopefully you've got that sorted. So our first word is water. Our second word is vow. Our third word is infant. Our fourth word is prayer. Our fifth word is candle. And our last word I never get this one right, is dedication. Hmm. Okay, not quite infant baptism, bit of a trick there, but I'll come back to that later. So what I'd like you now to do is uh, pin back your ears. I'm going to play a little clip to you that I found. I'd like you to watch this, and uh, this will give you a bit of a background about infant baptism before we go on to our main task. So let's watch this now. I'm Anna. And I was baptised when I was 13 in a Church of England, or Anglican, church. Some churches baptise babies to welcome them into Christianity. Others only baptise people when they're old enough to make the decision for themselves. When I was a baby, instead of baptising me, my parents decided to give me a service of dedication, which means they said they'd bring me up in a Christian home and tell me about what they thought of God but that they'd leave it to me to decide whether I believed and wanted to live by that faith or not. As I grew up, I asked a lot of questions and I came to the conclusion that I did believe that it was true. So when they were doing baptisms at church, I thought it would be a good opportunity to make a proper and public commitment to God. It's very common in Anglican churches to baptise infants. I've come to St John the Evangelist Church to talk to the Associate Vicar, Rachel Hawes, and find out more. Well, all religions have ceremonies, uh, we call them initiation rites, which mark people's entry into the religion. And so baptism for Christians is the important ceremony or initiation rite into the Christian faith. And it has been from the very beginning of Christianity so what happens in a typical Anglican infant baptism? 
We do it in the main service and the parents will all come to the font with the baby. And the font's the name for uh, whatever we put the water in. And this, uh, which we're standing by, is our font. So the first thing that happens in baptism uh, is that we have a series of promises. Now, when adults are baptized, they make these promises for themselves. But when a baby is baptized, uh, obviously they're too young to make the promises. So their parents and their godparents make the promises on their behalf. Will you pray for her, draw her by your example into the community of faith, and walk with her in the way of Christ? In baptism, this child begins her journey of faith. You speak for her today. Will you care for her and help her to take her place within the life and worship of Christ's church? Then the second very important picture or image in baptism is the signing with the cross. So we have holy oil and so the priest will take the oil and dip their thumb in it and sign the baby on the forehead and say, um, Christ claims you for his own, receive the sign of his cross. We offer the oil to all the parents and godparents so that they too can dip their thumb in and sign the baby on the forehead. Then we come to the water, and water is obviously central to the service of baptism. And we pour the water into the font at that point, and, and usually here we ask one of the parents or godparents to pour the water in so that everybody can see it going in. And then the priest will bless it, now sanctify this water, that by the power of your Holy Spirit they may be cleansed from sin and born again. And then they will use it to baptise the child. Rosabel, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So at the end of the service, we will call the parents up to the chancel, that's where the altar is, and we will light a special candle for the baby uh, from the candles on the altar, and we will give it to the parents for the baby. So obviously a baby is too young to understand what's going on. Um, could you tell me why a parent might choose to have their baby baptised? We believe that baptism is not just something we do, it's something that God does. So we believe that God is present at the baptism and is working in it. And Christians believe that as the baby grows, God is present with them and in their lives and that they will come to understand what has happened to them in baptism. Some churches don't allow infant baptisms at all. They wait until the person is old enough to choose for themselves. This is called a believer's baptism. As a church, we practice believer's baptism, and that's different than some churches like the Church of England or the Roman Catholic uh, Church. We believe baptism is for someone who consciously commits themselves to being a disciple of Jesus Christ. So how does baptism work in a Baptist church? Um, well, normally when people want to get baptized, they come to see me. Uh, that's usually anyone from the sort of early teenage years um, and over, and so sort of all, all ages. They'll come, and we have a baptism class. We'll take them through three sessions and explain what baptism is, what it means for them as a Christian, and what it means for their commitment to, commitment to the church. And uh, then there's a time scheduled for a baptism. Uh, sometimes it's one person, sometimes it's, there's a group. And it will happen here. Uh, it's a baptistry. What will happen is on a, on a Sunday morning, we'll have a um, congregation here, and uh, the, at the end of the service, uh, the person will be asked to come up. Um, they'll give what we call their testimony. They explain how they became a Christian, um, why they want to get baptized, uh, what it means for them. Learning to trust in Him has changed my life. And then uh, the person will come into the pool. So they'll come up uh, over here. Or, and uh, down into the pool, it'll usually be me or one of the other leaders of the church. And 
I'll ask them a question at that point. Brian, in your baptism, do you profess repentance towards God and faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And upon your profession of repentance towards God and faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Baptism means uh, partly that you identify with Jesus and his death and resurrection. And the Bible speaks about how uh, someone who's a trust in Jesus dies with Christ and his death on the cross is for them and how he rose again and their, his resurrection is for them as well. And baptism is a very powerful picture of that when you're immersed in water, going down into death, coming up life. So as you can see, baptism can take many different forms but ultimately it's about forgiveness and renewal. Okay, so our task then is uh, I'd like you to access the uh, description below. And in the description below, you'll find a grid that looks like this. You'll also find an information sheet. Now, the information sheet has the vast majority of what you need to complete this grid. It's really straightforward. This, what you need to do is you need to read the information sheet, which is actually uh, a section of the order of service from an infant baptism service. And uh, what you need to do is you need to extract the information and put them in the grid. Simple as that. So if there's two boxes, you need two bits of information. If there's three boxes, you need three bits of information. Um, really isn't that complicated. So you need to read the information to find the information out. Don't just be guessing it. Anything at the end of it. So that last question, three reasons why someone might choose to have their child baptized. You're going to have to really work out and think through. So if you do need to do a bit of research as well, do a bit of research. But you will find everything you need. Uh, on that sheet really other than that last question which is kind of an opinion based one so you're gonna have to pause me now while you get hold of all that information start working through it this is going to take you probably 20 minutes or so to do this because this is uh, an important task then you're going to come back to me So we said it'd be good if you could explain what happens in baptism, where you hopefully you've got a really good idea about infant baptism now, and so we'll look at believers baptism next time. Great if you could understand why someone might choose to get baptised, and this really stems to Jesus' teaching about go therefore and baptise people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. People get baptised because Jesus wanted them to get baptised. It's an expression of their faith. Um, and, and talk about the symbolism with that, with regards to the water and the cross and the, the oil and things. So, you say, a little bit of research maybe, but this is well what I want you to do. Okay, uh, this is going to take you the majority of the rest of this session. So you'll need to come back to me, leave yourself maybe two or three minutes by the end of this lesson. Um, you're going to design your own guide to infant baptism for a pupil in year five. And trust me, having a child in year five, they're a lot more intelligent than what you imagine they might be. So what I'd like you to do is in your little leaflet that you're going to make, I want you to talk about what happens during the service. I want you to talk about why people do it, who's involved and what the Bible teaches. And what you may need to do is a little bit more research to help you with that. But I'm sure you've got everything you need. So you get on with that and uh, you have to pause me, come back to me, uh, leave yourself for say about three or four minutes and then come back to me. Brilliant. So we've really met our objectives today. I'm sure that you know very clearly now what an infant baptism service is and what happens within it. So let's just check our understanding. Okay, what I'd like you to do is to write down the words of the things that happen in an infant baptism service. So which of these terms relate to infant baptism? Uh, so write those down, pause me and come back to me and we'll just check that you've got those uh, quite correct. Which of those link with infant baptism? Okay, so you've got christening, which is another term for infant baptism. Godparents. Uh, you've got Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You've got promises made on behalf of someone. Candle given. Vicar holds person in their arms. And possibly a party. It's not a religious part, but quite often that does go together. So I'm going to leave that today. Well done with your learning from baptism. Next time we'll do believers baptism. Last time we did sacraments. I've been Mr. Shelton. You've been amazing. 
Take care of yourselves, stay safe, wash your hands, God bless you, and I'll be seeing you soon.